Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about dependency injection for Blazor WebAssembly applications. Blazor supports this technique and using this technique, you can access abstract reference of your services from one central location. You can also define the lifetime of these services as singleton or transient. Let's see how we can use this in our application. In the last episode, we, we added view model as one of the layers between our UI and data access layer, right? And this view model will have all the properties which will represent the fields on our Razor component and it will have all the functions to access the data from the database. Okay, so let's assume that my team starts working on view model version 2, which is much better and much faster than version 1. And I want to use this version instead of using the old version. I'll have to tell my UI developer to go and use this reference instead of using the old version. But instead of doing that, I can use dependency injection and inject abstract reference of my view model into my Razor component. And that way my UI developer doesn't really have to know if I'm using version one or version two. I can change that from one central location. So let's try to do that in our application. So in the last episode, we added this profile view model as a class and then we added Razor component fields as properties to this class. And then we added some operators to convert our profile view model into model and model into view model. Okay. But instead of using the reference of this view model in my Razor components, I want to use uh, the I want to use dependency injection. I want to inject this reference into my Razor components. First, let's move these functions to our view model and call these functions from there instead of calling it from our uh, Razor components so that our Razor component can have minimum code. So I'm going to cut these functions and then I'm going to put them in my view model. I'm going to say that these will be new functions in here. They are update profile and get profile and they're going to throw some errors because we don't have HTTP client. So I'm going to comment that code and we'll fix that later. I'm going to comment that and this view model is going to be the same class. So I'm going to say this dot message is going to be profile updated successfully and same, same I'm going to use it here too. And then I'm going to comment this code so that it doesn't throw errors. And uh, I'm going to convert these functions into public void so that we can access them from a razor component. So I'm going to say public void instead of private async task. Okay. So I have these update profile and get profile in my view model. And I want to use these functions in my user component instead of using them from my code behind. So I'm going to, uh, for that, I'm going to refer them to profile view model, which is the reference added into my user component. So you can call update profile from view model instead of calling it from code behind. Okay. Let's run this and see if this works or not. So I'm going to stop the server, rerun it, go back to my browser. And I'm going to refresh my page. And here you can see that the functions are still getting called whenever I click on this button and I don't have any code behind. I mean, I have the reference, but I don't have the functions uh, in the view model. Okay. Now, instead of creating this functions, I want, instead of creating this reference, I want to inject this reference into my page. So I'm, I don't even want to write this piece of code. I'm going to get rid of that piece, piece of code and go to my program.cs to inject it as transient reference into transient reference into my services. So I'm going to say that builder.services, let's say builder.services.add transient at transient um, and I want to say that this is going to be profile profile view model as a reference and as service and whenever you know my application boots up we'll have to bring in namespace for this so I'm going to say using blazing chat view models okay so this is a transient um, service that we added into our program and then uh, I want to use this into my profile view model uh, into my profile um, uh, razor component so I'm going to say instead of using HTTP client that we don't even have I'm going to say I want to use profile view model I want to inject this concrete type into my into my razor component. I will have to refer to this variable. Okay. 
So now you can see that it's not gonna throw any error and we don't have any code behind into our razor component. Let's run this and see how this looks. So I'm gonna run that, go to my browser and I'm gonna refresh my page. And you can see that I can still call these functions from my uh, from my injected injected service. And if I move to a different page and if I come back here, then you can see that the message goes away. So if I go to settings page, come back here, you can see the message goes away. The reason why that's happening is because your razor component, whenever asks for the reference of your view model, is going to your service is going to give new reference every time whenever the component is initialized. And if you want to change that, you can change that by setting as add singleton reference. That means only one reference will get called. I should add it here. Uh, only one reference will get created whenever your application boots up and that reference will be used across your components. So let's see if that is true or not. So I'm going to rerun my application, go to my browser and refresh my page. And whenever I click on these buttons, you can see, you see that it's still working. But if I go to a different page and come back here, you can see that the reference stays the same the message stays there that means the components are still using the same reference of your view model okay but like i said if if i want to my team is working on version 2 which is much better and faster uh, than version 1 which is going to be version 2 and this version 2 is faster so i'm gonna first change the name of uh, my view model here so that it doesn't throw errors this is version 2 this is version 2 okay and this uh this uh version 2 view model is faster so i'm gonna say that this is faster so that we can uh, distinguish them so i'm gonna say this is faster and this is better too so whenever you update the profile i want to say that uh this dot first name um this profile is getting updated okay so that we know that whose profile we are updating and here i'm gonna set uh, this dot first name as john uh so that whenever you get the profile we'll say that we are getting john's profile is hard coding it here and i'm gonna say that this dot first name uh, plus uh, John's profile is loaded successfully and it's faster okay so now if I want to use this reference this I want to use this view model I don't want to go back to older version though uh, the change that I have to make is uh, I'll have to go to my program.cs and say that okay let's use version 2 and I'll have to go to my uh, razor component and I have to tell my uh, tell my UI developer to go and change the reference on all the razor components to use version 2 because it's faster Okay, um, let's see if this works or not. So I'm gonna rerun my application and go to my uh, go to my page And I'm gonna refresh my page and whenever I say get profile you can see that John's profile is getting getting loaded and it's faster and if I update a profile, let's say if I want to update a profile uh, to John uh, John Smith and uh, whenever I update, you can see that John Smith's profile has been updated successfully and it's faster. But I had to make changes into my into two files. I had to make changes into my razor component and I had to make changes into my program.cs. We don't have to do that if we are using abstract reference. So let's go for that. I'll have to create a reference. I'll have to create an interface of my view model. So I'm going to go ahead and create an interface. I'm going to say that this is um, the abstract class of our view model. This is going to be uh, interface and I'm going to name it as I interface and this will not have the definition of get uh, update profile. It will just have the signature. So I'm going to get rid of the definition, just keep the signature. I'm going to get rid of the operators. We don't need them here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And uh, my inter my view models, the version one and version two, they will have to implement this interface. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to say that you have to implement iProfile view model and you will also have to implement iProfile view model. Okay. 
And now if I want to use one of these references, the only change that I have to make is I have to just replace this view model with the abstract class. And I have to tell my uh, tell my application that there is an abstract class here so that um, you can create the reference by uh, the concrete type is this and this is the abstract reference. Let's see if this works or not. I'm gonna stop the services and rerun them again. And I'm gonna refresh my page. And whenever I get profile, you can see that it's still working. Whenever I say John Smith, and whenever I click on update profile, John Smith works fine. Now, if I want to go back to version one, let's say that you know version two is not ready. And if I want to go back to version two, the only change that I have to do, I have to go in my program.cs and just say that go back to version one we don't want to use version two yet it's not ready and i did not have to tell my ui developer to change anything in my razor component it will get changed by whatever service that you're providing whenever your application boots up so i'm going to refresh my page and whenever i click on update you can see that the message is coming from version one it's we are not using version two here that's awesome right so if you want to do some mock testing or if you want to uh, you know perform uh, have multiple services that you want to work on you can, the only place that you have to change is this program.cs okay there is one more thing that I want to talk about let's say I want to call a function which initializes my view model let's say I don't want to call this get profile uh, get profile in here. I want to get rid of this button. I want to call get profile whenever my whenever I'm adding this as a reference so that you know I don't have to wait for getting the profile when I click on the button. So one place to get the profile is in the constructor of the view model or we can get the profile in program.cs2. For that I'm going to get the host first. I'm going to say get host which will be builder.build that will get you the host and then you can get the services from the host you can say that host dot get host services dot get required services and here you can say that i want to get i profile service which we just added and you can catch that into a variable you can say that i profile view model is uh, that's what will get returned here uh, profile view model and here I can call my get profile I can say profile view model dot get profile here and let's run this let's first replace our builder here I'm gonna say host dot run so what we are doing here is we are we got the view model that we added as singleton service and now we are calling get profile which is one of the methods in the view model so that we don't have to call this call that method on a razor component you know and wait for the user to get the data from the server so I'm gonna rerun this and see if that works or not I'm gonna refresh my page I'm gonna refresh my page and you can see that the message populates that means I did not have to click on I did not have to click on get profile to get the profile the profile gets loaded in uh, the profile gets loaded in the services itself I thought that was pretty cool um, and uh, in the next episode we are going to talk about how we can uh, inject named HTTP clients you can see that we in the in the beginning of the episode we commented HTTP client we could either create the reference of this HTTP client or we could inject HTTP client and use that reference for calling our web API and we're going to talk about that in the next episode if you have any questions about this episode you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching bye